Bienvenidos. Today I'm coming at you from a place called Via Hero Hostel, but this hostel is much more like a resort as you can see. It's very, very beautiful. And I was just thinking about how kick-ass my life is. And I was reflecting on how terrified I used to be of pretty much everything. See, I wasn't always the beacon of confidence and charm that you see before you. I used to be incredibly insecure. Very, very scared of life, especially of women. But I was terrified of travel. And even to this day, when I think about going to a new country, it often scares the shit out of me. And um, now I've been to 21 countries and I've, I've seen a thing or two in my years in my time and so I want to talk to you guys who are a little bit afraid of traveling of going places during this this time of fear I want to show you where I am right now I'm in northern Colombia just down the road from a city called Santa Marta to my right is a place called Palomino and this is the beach we got some surfing lessons going on with the Colombians here and the tourists. I don't know where they're from, actually. I can't say they're Colombians. It's hot, it's beautiful. We've got people doing their Instagram modeling down here. I mean, look at this beach. So I get messages all the time from you guys. Is Colombia dangerous? Is Mexico dangerous? Is Guatemala dangerous? The first time I traveled, I went to a place called Thailand. You may have heard of it. You probably had some bad Thai in your life. And when I told my family, some of them, the first thing they said is, well, isn't that dangerous? And I've noticed this repeating pattern because I like to go to affordable countries. You know, I've been to Poland, the Ukraine, Bali, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Guatemala, and every time I go to one of these countries and people on social media, friends, family, they, they, they see where I'm going, they go, wow, isn't that dangerous? I think one of the reasons that they say this is because they spend too much time listening to the media, watching the news, on Facebook, hearing stories about you know people being kidnapped and raped and murdered and chopped up into little pieces. Sure, that can happen. <laughs> and you hear this uh, notion that that could happen anywhere. But I'll tell you where the real violence and horror and terror is happening. In your imagination. In your head. Look at, say, take Mexico for example. How many people live in Mexico? Millions. How many Americans live in Mexico? 1.5 million Americans live in Mexico. Do you think that 1.5 million people living there are living in terror? They're, they're scared of being kidnapped or uh, attacked in the night. Wow, I just about killed myself tripping over a stick. See, it is dangerous in Colombia. You could, you could trip on this uh, beach debris. That's the river coming in from the jungle coming out into the sea and such is the the cycle of life from ocean to ocean right this is where the fear exists in your head all you have to do is stop thinking and just do it right Colombia is just as dangerous as Argentina or Peru or Mexico or Thailand or south side Chicago. Bad things can happen anywhere. I got into a car accident last week and that sucked. I was sore for a week. I'm very, very lucky I didn't die. But if I died, that would have been okay too. I don't wanna die, but I have established for myself a notion of what happens when I die. What happens when I die? Well, I go to the astral plane, a place of infinite possibilities. 
and it's gonna be awesome and I will regret absolutely nothing because I had an amazing life. When you die, are you gonna be regretful that you didn't go see the world? You didn't start a business, you didn't approach the girl that you wanted, you didn't find the, the man you wanted? Because you didn't try. Not because you had bad luck, but because you were too scared to try. Because of some shit you read on Facebook. Oh, you're gonna get a disease, you're gonna get a flu, you're gonna get robbed, you're gonna get kidnapped. This is mental illness. When you get out of that fantasy world and you actually go somewhere and experience reality, it completely changes your perspective. Your perspective. You need to experience reality. And it will change your perspective 179%. I think the biggest fear that most people have outside of potentially dying from a tsunami or an earthquake or a gang or a kidnapping or a drug overdose from a prostitute or whatever it is you're afraid of is the fear of what other people think of them. I have a friend, he's a young guy from a foreign land and he wants to go travel now because I convinced him that this would be good for his special develop for his uh <laughs> special development. I convinced my friend that traveling would be really great for his social development, for his confidence and his it, just to have adventure and develop his charisma. The guy is 24 years old and he's worried about what his parents will think because Mexico is dangerous. My parents won't let me go. Mexico is dangerous and, and, and my brother told me I shouldn't go and my parents told me it's a bad idea and everyone says it's a bad idea well I'll tell you I'll tell you what most people are asleep most people are terrified of living life most people are pussies that's just it Ugh. most people are absolute pussies could I be eaten by a shark could I be caught in a riptide right now? Yeah. <laughs> but if I, if I go, I go. I go to the astral plane and the infinite possibilities of that ethereal nature. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. The girls are not sure if they wanna come in the water or not. It's okay, come on. It's bueno. Most, a lot of Colombians don't know how to swim, I've heard. Okay, so let's go see the rest of this hostel. <laughs> it's muy facile aquí, out there. <laughs> it's Colombia dangerous. There's a big danger you might fall in love with the locals. The closer you are to death, the closer you will be to life. The closer you are to death, the closer you are to life. The scariest things that ever happened to you are also your best stories and some of your fondest memories. Maybe you almost died of cancer, but you survived. Perhaps you were robbed at gunpoint. And now you have a great story to tell everybody about how you were robbed at gunpoint. Maybe you traveled to a foreign country and went swimming in a river in Laos and got caught up in the current and almost drowned, which happened to me. That became a chapter in one of my novels. Coming close to death is a gift. When you're lying in your hospital bed, farting into your starched sheets, being fed prune juice, you're not gonna think, thank God I played it so safe. Thank God I stayed home, I could have been kidnapped. That's not what you're gonna think. You're gonna go, God damn, I wish I went to, I wish I went to Puerto Rico with that, that man I met. I wish I went surfing. I wish I smoked crystal meth. Maybe not the crystal meth part. 
Have you ever heard the, the saying that we're living in the age of anxiety? <laughs> I can't go very, you can't go very long without hearing somebody say, oh, well, I suffer from anxiety. I have anxiety. This is what anxiety is. Anxiety is trying to solve every single problem at the same time. What happens if you try to solve a problem? What if I go to Mexico and someone steals my phone? Well, then I'm going to have to buy another phone. Should I buy a cheaper phone? You see what happens here is this will start branching out into a thousand other questions. What if I get kidnapped? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? When you try to solve every single problem at the same time, your imagination will just generate more and more problems and eventually you become like a robot with your head spinning, shooting steam out of your ears. The answer isn't to try to solve every single problem. It's to stop thinking. Take a breath and clear your mind. Stop thinking and do. You're always going to be happier with an experience than a thought. You're going to be more happy having an experience than having a thought. You'll have plenty of time to reflect on your experiences, but if you're constantly going, what if, what if, what if, what if, you're just going to put yourself in a little prison where your mind is the jailer and the boss. You will be your own prison guard and prison warden. Learn to meditate. Learn about mindfulness. Learn how to center yourself and stop feeling the fear, the anxiety, the dread. Do you like it? Do you like feeling that way? If so, keep doing what you're doing. We're all gonna die. You might not have a religion, you might not have any sort of system to give you the, give you the answers for what happens when you go. But trust me, it will really help if you do figure something out. Give yourself a philosophy of some kind. Now I'm not saying don't use common sense. There are some places you shouldn't be at night. If you see a tiger creeping towards you, don't try to hop on his back and go for a ride through the jungle. You probably won't like that. I'm just trying to tell you not to believe everything that you read or hear or see on social media. Most of your fears are absolute fantasy. All right, get out there, get your passport, get a ticket, go somewhere. Adios.